Hey and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be continuing off from where we left off in the previous one and finishing off the settings widget. Much like the last two videos, the video method comes from the YouTuber Matt. As usual, I will leave a link to his YouTube channel down in the description. With that, let's get started. Carrying on from where we left off in the previous video, we are going to load the settings since we've already set up everything else. So to load the settings, we are going to create a custom event. Just select a free spot somewhere in the event graph and then right click look for custom event this custom event is going to be called load settings and then from the load settings we are going to drag off and look for get game user settings and then from the return value we're going to drag off and apply settings and then uncheck the check for command line override and then from the get game user settings return value drag off and then look for get screen resolution so we're first going to set up the resolution and then from the return value drag off and then look for a break end point from the break end point the x we're going to drag off and then look for a two text a two text integer and then just duplicate the two text and then connect that to the y and then we're going to do is we're going to drag in the combo box so hold control drag it in and then from the combo box drag off and then look for set selected option and then what we're going to do is we're going to right click and then look for a format text and then in the format text what we're going to do is in the format section we are going to add a squiggly bracket the one by the square bracket and then we're going to put an x a close squiggly bracket another x open squiggly bracket y close squiggly bracket and then when you when you deselect that you will get two options for x and y and then you connect the top two text to the x the bottom two text to the y and then you take the result and then connect that to the set selected option and then you'll get a conversion node and then connect the execution pin and then that will be it for the select resolution and then moving on i'm gonna set it up as functions so you can either use a sequence node or just connect everything one after the other uh, i'm just gonna make a change to the save settings over here i'm gonna add a custom event because we're gonna add this somewhere and then this custom is gonna be called save settings and then just connect that also to the get game user settings and then just pull over the comment box to encompass everything and then now moving on back to and then back here i'm gonna start off by loading the vsync option so like i said i'm gonna make them as functions so you can either use a sequence or just put them one after the other so in the functions create new function say load vsync and then by the load vsync we're gonna drag off get game user settings from the return value we're going to drag off and then look for is vsync enabled and then hold b left click create a branch connect that to the condition connect the execution pin and then we're going to drag in the disable vsync so if vsync is enabled so true we are going to put it as on and then if it's not then we're just going to duplicate the disable vsync and then just connect it to the false and then just change the two. So with this one, it's gonna check if the vsync has been selected by the player. And if it is, it's gonna disable the vsync on. If it hasn't been selected, then it's gonna select the vsync off whenever you load up the game. Or rather, when you load up the settings widget. For some reason, I don't know, I can't quite explain it, but the resolution isn't selected the same way everything else is selected it pretty much just leaves it as is but when you load up the game it will be on your selected resolution so i'm gonna try and figure out a way to um, a workaround for it but for now i haven't found one yet it does still work though and then we're gonna move on and do the full screen so we're gonna select the vsync and then just duplicate the function oh before we move on in the event graph just drag in the load vsync to after the 
set selected option and then just connect the function. Then we're gonna set up the code for the view mode. So just rename the function to load view mode. And then for here, we're gonna remove everything after the get game user settings. And then from the get game user settings, we're gonna drag off and then look for get full screen mode. And then from the get full screen mode return value, we're gonna drag off and look for a switch, connect the execution pin. And then we're gonna get the disable view and then take the full screen, connect that and then select full screen, duplicate it and then select the windowed, connect the execution pin and then deselect the full and then select the windowed. And then we're gonna duplicate the view mode. We're gonna go load AA and then we're gonna remove the last few nodes after the get game user settings. From the return value, drag off and then get anti-aliasing quality. From the return value, drag off and then look for a switch to int. And then we're just gonna add four pins, four pins from zero to three. And then you can remove the, the default by, by right-clicking on it and then remove execution pin. So now we only have the four pins left. And then from here, we are simply just gonna drag in the disable AA and then just set it up. So what it's gonna do is when it loads the AA, it's gonna get the game user settings, get the anti-aliasing quality and then select it from zero to three as we have it selected over here by the by the code. See, as we have here by the select anti-aliasing according to what our selection is. So we're gonna connect all the execution pin and then just duplicate the function for this able AA as many times as there are pins and then just select them accordingly. Zero is low, one is mid, two is high, and then three is epic. This is how every load function is gonna look. It's pretty much the same as the previous video where it's gonna be a repetition of everything and just swapping out the appropriate sections. So the parts we'll be swapping out in this video would be the um, disable function and then the get for whatever option we're loading. And then we're gonna compile, save, and then the event graph, just add the next one afterwards. Uh, I forgot to load. Okay, we have the VSync. Okay, the view mode is the next one over here. So as I said, you can either do it like this or right after the set selection option, you can drag off and then look for a sequence mode and then just have it look like so. Instead, just deselect this connection over here and over here. So what you would have is you would have them stacked this way. In the sequence mode, you have one, two, three, and then all the other ones follow afterwards. The option is completely up to you. It's gonna do the exact same thing. It's just uh, an appearance preference, I guess, if you wanna put it that way. But I'm gonna go with them one after the other because they're as functions. So now we're gonna move on to the next one. And like I said, it's just gonna be a repetition of everything, just swapping out the appropriate nodes. So we're gonna select the AA, duplicate it. And then the next one would be reflection so in the newly created function take the get anti aliasing remove that from the get user settings return value drag off look for get reflection quality connect that to the switch selection and then just remove all the functions at the end and then put in the appropriate ones disable reflection and then just duplicate that function as many times as there are pins and so from here, I'm merely just gonna show the first one and then show you the results afterwards to save time on the video. But now that done, I'm gonna compile, save. So now I'm onto the next function, select the load reflection, control D. The next one in line is the shading. So rename it to load shading. Take the get reflection quality, remove it from the game user settings, return value, drag off, get shading quality it connect the return value to the selection by the switch and then just remove all the functions at the end and i will see you all when i'm done with the shading so i'm done with the shading as you can see i just swapped out the function at the end had the appropriate selection 
Now we're moving on to the shadow. Select the low shading, copy or duplicate it, and then just rename it to shadow. Take out the get shading quality, drag off from the return value by the get user setting. Look for get shadow quality, connect the return value to the selection and then just remove all the functions. I'm done with the shadow, get shadow quality, have the appropriate one, rename the function. Now moving on to the texture, select the load shadow, duplicate it, rename it to load texture, and then just remove the get shadow quality from the get game user settings, drag off, look for get texture quality, connect the return value to the selection, and then just remove the functions and then drag in the appropriate ones. I have now completed the texture quality load function. Just remember to select the appropriate um, condition for each uh, number from zero to three, low, mid, high, and epic corresponding accordingly. We're just gonna compile and then save and then head over to the event graph and then just drag in all the ones we haven't yet thus far. So we have vsync, anti-aliasing, view, and we need reflection, shading, shadow, and texture. And then just connect all the execution pins. So now with all that done, we're gonna compile and save. We're just gonna drag a comment over the load settings. Add a comment, and then load user settings. And then we want to put the custom event is by the event construct. So when you open up the widget for the first time, we are going to load the selection. So when you open it, it's going to pre-select whatever has been selected previously by the user. And then what we're also going to do is by the benchmark, by the optimize, we also then need to um, save and load the settings as well that the benchmark has determined is best for the player's hardware. So after the apply hardware benchmark results, drag off and then look for the save settings custom event. And then after the save settings custom event, we are then going to load the settings. So now it's gonna run the benchmark, save the results, save the settings from the selection. And then we're gonna load it and then display it to the player. And then that is everything we need to do for the load settings functionality. We're gonna compile and then save, and then see if this works. So just save all, play in the viewer, head over to the settings. It has been selected as epic. What I'm gonna do is, because there isn't really much difference between most of these, I'm just gonna set them all to low. So as you can see in the background, I don't know if you do, but there's like a slight difference, especially in the, when it comes to lighting. We're gonna save the settings, head back. You can see there is a difference. Doesn't look as nice as it was before. I'm gonna close the editor and then we're gonna play the editor again, see if the settings were saved. So it still looks the same. Head into the settings. This is what we had previously selected. The VSync was from the previous video or it's pre-selected as off. And then we'll set the full screen and then 90 just to also make sure that everything works. So we're gonna set it to on because it was previously off. Save, head back, close, play again. Go into the settings. Did I not do the FPS? Okay, I didn't do the FPS. Okay, so close this. Then we're gonna head into the settings because I forgot to do the FPS. So for the FPS, we're gonna create a new function. Call it load FPS limit. So from the load node, we're gonna drag off Look for get game user settings. From the get game user settings, return value drag off. Look for get frame rate limit. And then from the get frame rate limit, we're gonna drag off and look for a truncate. I hope I'm saying that word right. And then from the truncate return value, we're gonna drag off and then look for an equals. So equals equals. And then the first one is gonna be 30 and then hold B and then left click, create a branch, connect the condition, connect the execution pin. And then we're gonna drag in the disable FPS. 
and then if it's true we're gonna connect this and then select it as 30 and then if it's false we are going to add another branch node connect that to the false and then we are going to drag off from the truncate add another equals 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 select 60 connect that as the condition for the second branch duplicate the disable fps if it's true we select it as 60 and then we're pretty much going to repeat this over and over again so you can pretty much just take the equals branch and the function and then just duplicate them and then connect the false to the newly duplicated branch and then from the truncate connect that to the equals set that to the new limit of 90 change it by the disable function and then just select the three nodes again duplicate them connect the top pin to the truncate from the equals connect the false from the branch before to the second branch and then set the new limit to 120 just make sure you change it by the equals as well to 120 and then we're going to do it one last time so paste the false to the branch the pin by the equals to the truncate and then set the new limit to zero and then that will be unlimited unlimited and then that will be it for the fps just want to double check and make sure it's 30 60 90 120 and then zero for unlimited i'm going to compile and save head over to the event graph drag in the fps limit load function connect it at the end of the queue and then just compile and save head over to the main menu save all and then play head over to the settings so 90 has been selected do 120 we save head back close play again settings so as you can see everything is selected and now we're going to do the optimize so now as you can see it has selected everything it has selected there and then the vsync doesn't really count as such so we'll put this off and then see if this works and then when i save head back so as you can see the lighting has become better again close play settings are still applied we open and then everything loads in so we're going to close that everything works and then since we have a settings option at the pause menu for when the player is in the middle of a race we are going to select the settings widget since we are done with it everything is done in there we're simply going to duplicate it and then we're going to rename this one to settings pause and then we're going to open it we're going to head into the event graph so everything here is fine there's no problem today what we need to do is by the back button so here instead of loading the main menu we're going to change this to the pause widget and then we're going to compile and save and then we're going to open the pause widget as well head over to the event graph and then by the options so i never did the options okay so we need to do the options the settings unclick and then by the settings unclick we're going to drag off they want to select remove from parent from the remove from parent drag off and then create widget and then the widget we're creating is the settings pause and then from the turn value we're going to drag off and then add to viewport and then that will be everything we're going to compile save play head over to play and then going to go race do the sprint race and then we're going to hit the pause head over to the settings so now we have all the settings here as well then we're going to head back and then hit resume and then everything works fine so everything is good the settings have been applied the settings are being loaded and the widgets are reflecting exactly what the player has selected. With that, that brings us to the end of this video and until the next one.